We're just about ready to go down trackside for the chairman of the board, Bruton Smith, to give that command to get this race underway. In racing, please welcome the CEO of Speedway Motorsports Incorporated, Mr. Bruton Smith. Gentlemen, start your engines. Better buckle up. We got the Coca Cola 600 coming up next on TBS. Looking down pit road as the field begins to roll. The 43 qualifiers for the race start with Jeff Gordon on the pole, his second straight 600. That's what he's after tonight, and his third in all. Now the I race think, are we going to see here tonight? I think they're ready. I think they're ready, too. And I'll tell you one reason they're ready is in the last three years, this race has had 79 lead changes, an average of more than 26 per event. This is liable to be one of the most competitive auto races all year long. Elliot Sadler would just come down the pit road, made a pit stop. I hope there's nothing wrong with the car, but he did make a pit stop, and he's back out on the racetrack. On the pole for the fifth straight time. Jeff Gordon tying the record of David Pearson, which was established just 20 years ago. This is the anniversary of that Pearson record. And there you see the field entering turn three. Mile and a half track, back in the 24 degree bank. Storylines, Earnhardt, he's driving hurt. His shoulder really hurts. He's got some bent ribs. Bill Elliott, you know how badly he's hurt. Back is hurt, broken foot, broken hand. That's not going to stop him. Skinner, he's badly hurt as well. We may see a reserve in for him very quickly. Jeff Gordon is the only guy in the last 20 years that's won this race from the pole. He may do it again. Again. Field coming down, ready to take green. 39th annual Coca-Cola 600 is underway and going into turn number one. It looks like Gordon on the way. at this battle for second as Mark Martin begins to move in on Jeff Gordon. He did it the hard way. He went by him on the outside in turn three. Going into three, pulled up alongside of it. All turn four, Mark Martin in second place now. Great drive, early run for Mark. That, usually he sits back until about 30, 40 laps into an event. His car must be extremely good right now. There's a big difference between turns one and two and three and four. They say you race through one and two and you drive through three and four. No matter what they've done to this racetrack, buddy, there's always been a big bump there as you come off four that's very unsettled. Turn four is the tires really get slick and the biggest thing it does, it comes off there and kind of jumps sideways and it's... Martin again won the Winston. We could go Saturday. Yesterday, won the 300. Trying to be the guys up for that million dollar bonus. Each have the same color on their rear spoiler. So that's another way to keep track of the no-bowl five. Earnhardt, Bobby Labonte, Mayfield, Schrader, and Wallace. Rusty Wallace was the great beneficiary of that caution flag. He went into his pit in sixth position. He is now in first position. What a lightning stop he had. And Ward Burton went from first back to fifth. There's those no-bowl five guys, and that's where they are right now in the race. Rusty Wallace can win a million-dollar bonus if he can stick there. Also, you got to remember, Rusty Wallace is right in the middle of the points battle right now. He walked his five points for leading the lap, and he's going to get it and come by leading the race here at Charlotte. See that orange-red spoiler on number two? Let's go to Alan Bestwick. 
Well, interesting story down here between uh, Kenny Wallace and Ted Musgrave. You see, there are only 42 pit stalls on pit road, 43 starters today. That means those two guys who both took provisionals shared a pit. Therefore, they were in a race going to that first caution flag. The guy that got there first to the start finish line was able to pit first. The guy that got there behind the other one had to wait and come around the racetrack and pit the second time. Kenny Wallace finished second to Musgrave on that first stop. He picked up five bonus points when the leaders came in, but he lost 10 positions after he pitted uh, for the second go around. So uh, interesting scenario down here towards turn four in the pit. You would think it was 10 laps to go as they go off in the turn three right there. You can see Rusty Wallace fighting Jeff Gordon side by side and Mark Martin just behind him inches away. One of the interesting things to keep an eye on here as this race unfolds is that this is one of NASCAR's most capricious racetracks. It changes dramatically as the sun comes out and goes away and as the temperature rises and falls. And right now, for about the first time today, we're seeing pretty bright sun. But that's going to go away for sure in a little while. This place drives the mechanics nuts during every pit stop as they try to adjust the cars to the changing conditions. And they're still side by side. Nobody shows any advantage right now. They have had a chance to work on these cars. Here comes John Andretti in fourth place. He's going to make a, a race out of this. And Ward Burton, our early leader in the race, moving into the fray. Bobby Lovato is there. Jeremy Mayfield. Benson pulling up. They continue to go even across. And with Gordon leading a lap, he's now led in 10 of the 11 driving races in which he's participated. And look at this struggle. Ford against Chevrolet. This is a good You think it was the final lap. Instead of lap 45 to be completed this time by. Well, this is what they all came to see, isn't it? Well, the only thing wrong with running side by side like that, the car on the inside is actually leaning on the tires more. Jeff Gordon getting a little bit better grip as they come off turn two. Here comes Wallace back though on the inside, but anytime you make a shorter turn in the corner, you put a little more heat in the tires later on in the run. That could hurt, hurt Rusty just a little bit. We see that outside line. Jeff Gordon pulls up half a car length as they come back into the main straightaway. They got black money on this field, Baker. <laughs> <laughs> I think what they're doing right now. Well, we talked so much in the early get-go here about everybody adjusting on their cars. They're evaluating what they need later on in the race right now to be able to pass that 24 car. Ford against Chevy with a front spot in the Coca-Cola 600. 46 laps have been completed. One caution thus far. Boy, look at this sun coming out now, huh? Honest to God, Mark Martin's car is a rocket. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It hasn't mattered, has it, what the sun's no, doing to the racetrack? No, track. he don't even care. No, nope, he's fast no matter what. Look at this. On yeah. the outside. Look at this. Oh, oh man. <laughs> oh, don't <Whoa>. come over. <laughs> Not clear high. Did, have we made the point about uh, the 24 and two change in two tires? I don't know if I heard it. No. Okay. Well, that's you know that's a point that can, that needs well, to be made if that's the case, and that's what I heard. I'm way down at no, turn four. No, I don't have that. No, the 24 changed four. Okay. Is that true? What about the two? Did we make that point? Uh, okay. Are you sure those guys all changed four? That's what I'm. I, I want to make sure. I couldn't tell. I'm down okay. to turn four, but I I had a note they did. So. I was just really checking if that was the case. Do you, do you see John Andretti's car? Watching Jeff Gordon trying to win it back-to-back. -back. Done on five previous occasions. Steve Burns.
and some nervous early moments for Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. Jeff reported over the radio that he thought the motor was missing. Well, they switched ignition boxes and then switched back. There's two ignition boxes inside each car. Now he says it sounds fine and it's not missing or skipping anymore. Mike Hogwood. Down at our end. You know, we maybe ought to set up early on the adversity that Gordon and his guys have been through. You know, enumerate mm -hmm. running out of gas last week, the crash yesterday morning, Everett Ham's black eye. I've got a, uh, I've got a card going into Jeff Gordon. It's a tough next. race. It's a long race. And so, you know, it starts basically in the daytime and goes into nighttime. Yep. And then what we'll do is go right to what Dick was talking about. That's a good idea. Yep. It's a tough race. It's a long race. And so, you know, it starts basically in the daytime and goes into nighttime. And uh, you have to remember that the race is won at night. And so sometimes you have to give up a little bit during the day. But this, that's what makes it so interesting and what makes it such a prestigious race is that the track changes so much over a 600 mile race and the fans can be winners also uh, this 600 because um, if they want to help to save somebody's life uh, close-up toothpaste is doing what they call the close-up challenge where if you call the 1-800 Marrow 2 number not only can you possibly help to save somebody's life but uh, close-up will also donate one dollar for every call that they receive 1-800 Marrow 2 right it. That's well worth the doing. That's where you can really make a contribution. All right, here we are at uh, 58 laps complete, guys. Had a great start. Had Ward Burton just scoop down into turn number two. Looked like Jeff Gordon. He pulled it off on the lead as he went into turn number one, and then Ward drove around him, drove away, led for a while. Mark Martin has been up there showing a lot of stuff. We've seen Earnhardt in and out. He seems to be pretty well set now and ready to give it a good go. He'll come from 25th position on this restart, which is upcoming in about half a lap. And for those who think that Jeff Gordon is invincible, all he had to do was hang around Charlotte Speedway for the last week or so. Last Saturday night in the Winston, they tried running just a little bit light, ran out of gas with victory in sight. Yesterday morning, team driver in the car, flat tire, car in the wall. They had to work all day yesterday to get it right. And today, Ray Everham is sporting a black eye working on the car. One of the grinding wheels came apart. It's a good thing he was wearing safety glasses, but Ray's got a black eye. He says, however, the team has all pulled together, and that is what has given him the confidence that tonight will be their night. All the bad stuff is over. Quickly to Steve Burns on pit road. We know that this race started after 6 p.m. Eastern, but the garage area opened at 11 o'clock this morning, and all the teams were in here working hard. Now, here's what they did for seven hours before the race. This is Rusty Wallace's pit box. They have a list that has different designations under the car rear suspension. You see all these different items. They have the body, interior, the trunk, electrical system, front suspension, and the motor. 161 different items they checked, and the mechanic involved signs his initials to it to make sure the job's been done, and we're back to green flag racing. And is responsible for it. Wallace in fourth spot. Here's Gordon being challenged. Mark Martin is there. Mark Martin come off turn two like a shot out of a cannon and took the lead from Jeff Gordon. And just behind him, John Andretti showed a lot of early muscle. Yeah, but nobody's showing more muscle so far than that number six car. They are ever so strong tonight. Ward Burton is right there as well in fifth. Bobby Labonte in sixth. We've got Mayfield in seventh. And look at this gang up in front. Okay, as reported earlier, Mark Martin's car is a little bit loose with the car directly behind him. Here comes Jeff Gordon right back by Martin. You can see him move to the outside. Wow. John Andretti thought maybe uh, moving in the second, but thought better of it. Martin looks back and sees Andretti there as Jeff Gordon goes out in front. And here comes Martin back on the outside another time. Wait a minute, guys. This is 600 miles. Yeah. Mark Martin drives it deep down in the corner and reassumes the lead now. Jeff Gordon just behind him, trying to close back up. Pretty intense competition for this early on in the longest stock car race in America. They've got to go 600 miles, but they're making it seem as if this is a Saturday night 25 lap shootout. Look at Bobby Labonte in the 18 beginning to scramble here. Working on Burton in the 22. There's Terry Labonte on pit road. Uh, guys, yeah. Uh, the three is up from uh, up from 20th now to seventh. No, 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 no. That's not right. What is that? I don't, I don't know how to read your notes. He's 21st, but we need to see him. We need to see Earnhardt because he is coming. 
closed up on Nemechek. Front end spindle and assembly for Terry Labonte. Second place in points, still in the garage. Oh, boy. Can, we'll like, can somebody go get that story and I'm see? I'm here. Okay. Ben here. Okay. Does that sound like deja vu of Jeff Had Gordon, 1995 here? Right. Spindle, assembly. You know who? As a hub actually broke first. Hey, guys, in the pits, whoever's got Johnny Benson, that thing is hauling. Michael, I got the Dual Wheel Games in July in New York. Uh, what you got going on in July? Man, I'm not that far away from there. I'm up in Pocono, Pennsylvania, racing in the Pennsylvania 500. Maybe if I uh, get a chance, I could ease over there and see you. There's your leader. It's Mark Martin in front, and his lead that had extended to maybe 20 car lengths has been cut down considerably here of recent. Jeff Gordon's climbing back into this picture. Seven tenths of a second down is Gordon to Mark Martin, the leader. Gordon first, Jenny in second, John Andretti right there, ready in that third spot to see if he can do something with it. Here he comes. There you get a sense of the interval between second and third. Take How long would that take if you went to your neighborhood garage to get that kind of work? Oh, uh, it'd take two weeks, but let me tell you, <laughs> the real damage was done. He's second points, and that really sets him back in the field a long ways. When you're trying to win the national championship, you don't want things like that to happen. You know, it's really deja vu. You think about it back in May of 1995, Jeff Gordon won the pole for this race and had a right front hub fail, wound up spending a lot of time behind pit wall as well. And Jeff Gordon was just on pit road. They changed four tires. They also made a chassis adjustment to the right rear, transferring weight to the left front. Jeff saying the car was a little bit tight, so they want to free it up a little bit in the corners. So there's your leader, Mike Martin, in number six with 106 laps complete. Just moments before that, he came over the radio and told his crew chief, Steve Neal, the car feels a little loose. Matter of fact, a little looser than I'd like it. Right now, he is real loose. That's why he was on the high side of the racetrack coming off of turn four. We saw that spectacular save. But uh, they, they've got a little problem in the right rear tire, maybe going down. 124 complete battle for the lead. You've got Gordon versus Martin one more time. What a punch up this has been. Absolutely. Mark Martin took a look just a second ago in turn three on the high side of Jeff Gordon. Couldn't make it stick right now. He's just in his tire tracks here as they come off turn four. Jeff Gordon trying to become a three time winner. A year ago, he got stuck on a traffic jam trying to get out to the racetrack, and a police officer saved him, got him here. He got to the driver's meeting just about on time. This year, he just slept over yesterday, so they put Terry Labonte in the car to go out and practice. He ran over something in the track and scuffed up the whole right side of that number 24. But it sure doesn't look like he hurt it much, buddy. No, not at all. You see Todd Bodine going a lap down there. Jeff Gordon turns left under him. Rockets off the corner there. Mark Martin still working on him, trying to go by. Todd Bodine is in 26th position with that Tabasco car. All lap down. They did a lot of work on that number 24 car. Changed the whole rear end. Did a lot of sheet metal work on the side. In fact, they just managed to get the decals on that car this morning. They had to repaint the whole right side of it. And changed the right front hub. And lined it all back up again. And right out of the box. As soon as they put the rebuilt car on the racetrack, it was fast. 126 laps complete. 189 miles. Now take a look at how these leaders are running. There you see Gordon up in front. Martin's in second. Here's the interval. Back to third spot. And there you see Dale Jarrett there. And here's John Andretti. He's running number 43 in the fourth position. Following him is number two. Rusty Wallace should be coming along. A couple of lap cars here. Kenny Wallace is there. And the 98 of Trickle. And next one back is Wallace, followed by Jeff Burton. Here comes Mark Martin again, trying to take the lead away from Jeff Gordon as they swing off turn four, side by side, down the front straightaway. The crowd is on their feet as they go down 
to turn one. Big wiggle by Mark Barton as he goes on the outside of Gordon, held out of the race car, but man. Hey, we got a Panther in the pits. Let's go down there right now and get more on that story. <laughs> yeah, Lamar Latham, an all-pro linebacker with the Carolina Panthers, is here helping out the Joe Nemechek team tonight. You have become a big race fan since coming to Charlotte. Well, I'll tell you what. That was the first time when I came to Charlotte when I realized at halftime they would put up the race stats on the board and they got a lot of cheer than we could ever imagine. So I figured I better become a race fan. What's your job here in the pits tonight? Well, basically, I'm just I'm pitting uh, Joe. And, you know, earlier today he took me around and showed me everything. And I, I, re I didn't realize there was so much uh, put into auto racing. And this was a great experience. I think everybody should experience once in their life. Never hurts to have a good quick linebacker in the pits. <laughs> And there's a good one. Mark Martin has won the two races that have been run on mile and a half tracks this year. He won at Las Vegas. He won at Texas. Is he going to do it here? What do you think, Dick Berger? He looks awfully, awfully good. You know, the interesting story there, though, is before this weekend and before the Winston, he had won all three of his Winston Cup races in here, too, that Levani's dumping oil on the track. Oh, oh boy. Ball trip right. right away, and that's a good. You got a great race right yeah, here. You know, stay right here for the you know, race for the lead. You know, I'm not. And you I'm, got Ball trip trying to stay in the lead lap. Well, and Jeff Bodine trying to stay in the lead lap. Yep. And then they're having Hamlin problems. They're each having Hamlin problems. The rest of these guys are really having some trouble. You can see right there the uh, Presley and Hamilton. Shot back to hand, by him down the front straightaway there. Mark is being extremely careful right now. His race car is good. He knows he has a winner. He does not have to force the issue. Presley had gone a lap down. Now he makes it back up another time in the 77. And there's Hamilton in the four. 143 completed laps. But when that happened, look at Jeff Gordon take the outside of the racetrack. Rim riding around the racetrack here, trying to move in on Mark Martin. Martin edges down the main straightaway. Clears Hamilton, clears Presley. A little bit of a break for Darrell Waltrip, who stays in that lead lap, running now in 21st. The worst thing you can have is a loose race car and having to run low on the racetrack like Mark Martin did to get by Robert Presley just then. It they, makes the back of the car try to pull out. They tried to uh, get Terry Labonte in, and they now have him in. I thought there was a report that there might have been some oil coming out of that car. Here's the back. When the track gets slipping. Because if they just left him alone, the cars would get tighter and tighter and tighter, and that's what you would expect. But that's the trick, isn't it, buddy? Try to loosen the car up just the right amount and just, not too much. Just the right amount because the surface itself is going to get much, much better. Randy Pemberton standing by with who was the true player in this race. Well, Terry Labonte back in the garage area again. Why now? <laughs> Well, the first time we had a wheel bearing go out in the left front, and so we changed the spindle assembly and everything, went back, and uh, actually the same thing happened again. So I don't really know why. It's the same thing we run race every weekend, but it, it's too bad. Our Kellogg Chevy was running good tonight. The guys were doing a great job in the pits, and, you know, I thought we were going to have a decent finish. And I think we're going to finish early now. We talked a lot about track conditions, Terry, and how they may change or what they're like. What was it like out there? The track was in good shape. It was a little bit tighter at, at the start than I thought it was going to be, but uh, it was a good shape. Darrell Waltrip's fighting with everything he has to stay in the lead lap. That number one car is running in 20th position. Here's Mark Martin working on the bottom again. Pretty good battle there just to stay up in front. We'll be back with more in a moment. How come the 24 is running so high all the time, buddy? He can't hold it down. What he's doing right now, he's he's taking some of the pressure off the race car itself and running a higher line. It's gonna it's gonna have benefits later on. But he can run low if he needs to, as yep. you well see. Yep. What he does, he cools the tires a couple of laps. Of course, he seems to be running low in one and two and high in three and four. Let me check him out here. Yeah. Let's watch and see if he does that. Yep. You're, yep. you're exactly right. Uh, that that may not be real smart. But... Let's see if he does it again in one and two stays down low. Well, he doesn't fight to keep his car on the lead lap in it. See this, buddy? Who are you talking about running high in three and four? Uh, the 24, but he's running yeah, low. Listen, they told me last year that that's the way he beat Rusty Wallace. You guys might have been up there in a the booth. Uh, they said that he brings it to the bottom in the middle of three and four and 
starts to slide up the race right, right towards the wall. He's one of the only guys out here that does it. Hey, Randy. Yeah. He's not doing that, though. He's okay. running a okay. high line all the way through three oh, and four. That ain't what he did. <laughs> Okay, I got you. Allen's in the 40 pin. He's come up from 30th to the top 10. They're about 12 more laps away from the pit stop, See give or take. One and two. He's really getting good now. Who could use a yellow? Gordon's a little bit better in heavy traffic. But what, what's this? Hey, yeah. David, and now David he Green pulls is it going down. to the garage, guys. I don't know. <laughs> You've got two cautions, right? About the time you think you got two. it figured, huh? Two. Yep. I think what I said a while ago, I think he runs a couple of laps up there to cool. Now complete in the 39th Coca-Cola 600, 240 miles. The battle, well, it's a good battle for first place between Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon, but just as good a battle as watching Darrell Waltrip try to stay in that lead lap, buddy. Well, he, he's fighting very hard right now, but Mark Martin's closing in on him. Darrell has been putting up a valiant effort here. You can see him in the one car there. Mark Martin right on the white line. Jeff Gordon behind him, using some of his open wheel experience, moving around on the racetrack, trying to find that great groove so he can get up to Martin. Let's take a look at that battle that's going on a little further back here. As he continues to struggle, now he's going to lap down. Well, I wouldn't say that. He's fighting back. Jeff Gordon on the pit road. Let's go to Steve. And they just made a chassis adjustment to the right rear of this car. Four tires and gas for Jeff Gordon. Shane Parsonow and Mike Trowan are the tire changers. Barry Hughes the Jackman. 19.1 seconds for Jeff Gordon. And away is Gordon. So now you've got the situation with Mark Martin in that number six car still throwing such strength here to put it. Yeah, that number 24 car is having the pit stops, Kim. And I'll tell you what, that's the kind of stuff that wins races. And those Rainbow Warriors race after race after race are able to pull off those 17 second pit stops. In the end of a 600 miler, that will add up to be a huge benefit. Remember about Jolie Johnson as we watch ah, your Ah, there's a real driver. <laughs> no rear spoilers. None of the, you know, I've been to the wind tunnel seven times with this car. There's a man that drove the race car just as it was. All right, 1960. Steve Burns. Yeah, Jeff Gordon was just in. He took four tires. He did not make a chassis adjustment this time. He did on the last stop, but not this time. He also was complaining that he was very thirsty, so he did get some water. Let's go back upstairs. Jeff Gordon's number 24 back out here. Major contender as he tries to win it back to back. He'd become what, the fifth driver to do it. It's happened five times, but it's been done twice by old DW. I'll turn four. There you go. He Jer ran right over our camera. Mark Martin ran right over the camera that was planted in the infield, flattened it. <laughs> That's the well, end of the speed yeah, shot. You can kiss that one goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if we can send him a bill for that. Oh, what do you think? Good night, nurse. Well, you talk about the pass in the grass. There you are. <laughs> Since you put it that way, huh? Because the 88 is quicker than anybody, and Jeff Gordon coming right along with him. That's, there's your players. Ernest Hart, as long as he could, but it just didn't fall. Yeah. 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 When, when you people when you back here, look at this battle. Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, nose to tail, and just in front of them, fastest car on the racetrack by far right now, Dale Jarrett. Rusty Wallace is fourth, Gordon in fifth. Just in front of him, Spencer. Martin first, Spencer second, Jarrett third. Going to go on the inside. Jarrett has a very fast car, but he got caught on the outside and lost a lot of track position there. Here comes Gordon on the outside of the two-car Rusty Wallace. So it's Martin up in that front running spot. Then you've got Spencer, Jarrett, Wallace, Gordon in this contab right here, buddy. That's a grand Clear fight Clear for third around. spot. Third, fourth, and fifth. All running tight together just past the halfway mark in the event. Three wide down the back straightaway, Whoa. side by side. Rusty Wallace on the inside, Dale Earnhardt in the middle. Jeff Gordon in the third lane on the high side of the racetrack. Earnhardt just let him go. He realized right now that his car is not exactly right. 
Let him go after it. Earnhardt falls to 12th, Benson up to 11th. Well, we'll see what Gordon can do with this deal. This morning, Ray Everham said he had as good a chance to win this race as any he has ever entered in his career. They feel as if this is an exceptionally strong car. The team has very much pulled together for this race. They got a good shot at it. He's running very well tonight. Jeff Gordon in that number 24. A uh, major contender to win it back to back. There you see the six. Now you see the 23. That's first and second. Then the 88 comes through in third, followed by Gordon, followed by Wallace. That's the front of the field at the present time and the space between them. Jeff Bodine comes off turn four, just loses control. You see the back of the car trying to come around. He makes two or three corrections. All of a sudden, it gets away from him. Watch Jeff Gordon go through the grass right there, enter the racetrack just below by Bodine, staying out of harm's way. The oldest of the Bodine brothers, showing what experience means. His 15th start here, that was a real save. You can see him right there. He's getting it back straight, makes several corrections. Now watch the back when it really swings right there into the grass on the front straightaway. Starts back around, goes back out in the racing surface. There goes Gordon on the inside. Third place car, number 24. Gordon in second. This is the activity moments ago down on pit road. Martin on top. Then you see Jarrett and Gordon all making their pit stops here. And as they roll out, guess who's there first? You saw it, number two, Rusty Wallace breaking off pit road. And that's the second time that's happened tonight that they that Rusty has gone in fifth and come out first. That pit crew is really getting the job done. Let's go to Mike Cogwood. Comes Gordon closing ground. Gordon moving in. Look at that bump in turn number one. That really unsettles him. The first couple of laps before they get the air pressure back up in the tires like they're supposed to be. The drivers still make the cars move around quite a bit. You can see Jeff Gordon's car a little tail happy as they went into turn 22. As the tire pressure builds up as these cars go through the corners, the tires heat up, gets more air pressure in it. They drive much better after two or three laps. Top three bunched together. Wallace leading. Rusty Wallace, what does winning the Coca-Cola 600 mean to a driver? The 600 miles is a, is a milestone. It, it, it's hard to win a 600 mile race. And it, it, when you win and, and you beat them pretty hard, that feels good. Uh, although, I will tell you, if you lead all day long back and forth and you race another cat all day long back and forth and that guy's leading you, he's just passed you with five to go, let's say, okay? And you're going in, and you took the white flag, you're going into turn one, and he drifts a little high, you get underneath him, and you win it with a half lap to go. That gives me more satisfaction than it does just sitting out there all day long by myself. Well, I tell you what, Rusty Wallace is doing a great job. Watch him bring the car down on the bottom part of the racetrack. Jeff Gordon, unable to stay low. Here comes Dale Jarrett on the bottom side, trying to take second away from Gordon. Wallace knows about winning. One here in 1990 in a great battle with Bill Elliott. Here's Gordon back on the inside and not finding running room. Up to the outside moves Jarrett. Running for the million tonight. Rusty Wallace is in front. He can collect an extra million bucks in that no-bowl five if he can stay there. One of the top five at Daytona and a lucky fan to collect a million as well. Lock riding on that red spoiler on the back of number two. One of five allowed to carry it tonight. Ken, did you see what Dale Jarrett did? He job, passed man. Jeff Gordon in a draft on the outside there. That shows a lot of muscle. As they said, Jarrett gets stronger and stronger as the race goes. He is clearly a fast, fast race car right now, but so is Rusty Wallace here. Never giving up, working on every pit stop, but Jarrett right now seems to watch when he gets in the corner here. The high groove seems to be working very well for the 88. The 90 winner on the inside now and a high on the track, the number 88, the 96 winner going at uh, this 600. And here comes Gordon back into it. Well, if Rusty says that he gets satisfaction out of racing with people in order to win the thing, he is going to get a lot of satisfaction <laughs> if he can pull this win off tonight. He has got his hands full. 
15 car lengths back in fourth spot is Mark Martin. Down to the inside comes Wallace. Again, holding off the number 88. 88 back on the outside. He cannot hold off Jared at all. Jared to the high side there. Rusty fight back on the inside as they head down to the dog leg. Jared clearly in the lead now. First time tonight that Dale Jarrett has carried his four colors up in front. Back comes Wallace another time. Well, Jarrett gets a great run in the center part of the corner. Rusty Wallace earlier in the race couldn't get off the corner. Has that fixed right now. Here is where Jarrett is really strong. Getting into turn three. You'll see his car right here. Move ahead of Wallace as they go around the turn three. And there's a fourth guy that has just joined the party. Mark Third Martin in the number six is right inside. in there as well. Clear all around. Top Clear. Four in a bundle. Whoa. -ho -ho. Getting close. Man. You're watching lap 256 live on TBS. Four of the greatest racing drivers in America at it strong to win the 600. Wallace with the incentive of an extra million dollars now falling back as Mark Martin pulls up on the inside. The battle's for third, and Martin, who's left, dominated for a while, is yeah. pulling up. Meanwhile, for the lead, look at this. Jeff Gordon puts that Chevrolet in front of three Fords. Boy, all I had to do was talk about how good Jared's car was working. <laughs> Here comes a 24 right now, Jeff Gordon. Very, very strong. Mark Martin has made the pass now. He's clearly in third place. It is a battle of champions. The defending champion of the 600. He's up on the point right now. There's Gordon, the 96 winner of the 600, right behind him, Dale Jarrett. And back there, nestled in full spot, number two, Rusty Wallace. He's shown he has it to be up there. Can he climb back to the top? There's still plenty of time. 257 laps are now complete in the 600. That brings us to 385 of the 600 miles. The entire crowd is on its feet. You look up in the grandstand and these shots, no one, absolutely no one is sitting down. How can you with racing as great as this? Man. This is, a, this is really what stock car racing is all about. So competitive. Well, Jeff Gordon's done it again. He's pulled back around. Remember when he was 22 years old and he won this race? And he thanked, he thanked Ray Everham and he thanked that pit crew for the brilliant job they did. And again tonight, they kept him in the hunt. If you don't have a good team on pit road, you can write it off at the speeds they're carrying around this mile and a half track. It's won and lost in the pits time after time. But right now, it comes down to driver against driver. And that's why every seat here in Charlotte is sold out to see a battle like this. And he is so good, especially in this event in Charlotte. Coming into tonight's race, he had led 242 laps here in Charlotte. 201 of them in this event. Won it in 1994, won it in 1997, four poles in a row. Gordon in the lead again at Charlotte. We're into the early stages of, of the tire chain, so the Fords have been very, very strong. We have a Chevrolet, a Ford, a Ford, and a Pontiac right now. You know, Pontiac has been struggling. They've only won this race a couple of times. They've got a crack at it tonight. They, they have some very good cars still very much in the hunt. We'll talk about that in just a moment. We're going to have to take a, a break and then be back with you as we watch that battle continue between the leaders, Jeff Gordon, and right now in second spot, Dale Cherry, but it could change. Hey, race fans, Budweiser asked, who won? May 25th, 1997, Charlotte Motor Speedway. Jeff Gordon in car 24 started from the pole, but by the end of lap one, the Budweiser Chevrolet of Ricky Craven and number 88 with Dale Jarrett aboard were side by side for the lead. Shadowing the leaders was car number 33 of Ken Schrader, winless since 1991. He put his car into the lead on lap 28. Dale Earnhardt in car number three had to work his way to the front from 33rd starting position, but who won? Take a look at the contenders. The answer is coming up.
Yeah, good idea. You got a graphic on it? This is the perfect time to do it, too. This is the time to pop Motegi. Can we do the first three and then and then go on the money? This is tightening up. We're going to have a big, big fight here for the lead. <clears throat> I want to yell. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's really going to do it. OK, tell him just hold off. Stay right where he's at. He's trying to mess her show up. They're looking forward oh, now. Here hey, we go. Hey, hey. Here we go. Now we're getting in there. The tires are getting hot. And these, look at Ooh. this. Look at this. Ho -ho! Oh. I'm telling you, boys. That Chevrolet is tough, but when those Fords get a few miles on them and the tires start getting a little bit slick. At the end of the night, it was Jeff Gordon celebrating in victory lane. Driving on the edge of control, Dale Earnhardt finished seventh after starting 33rd. A broken rear end in the Budweiser Chevy ended Ricky Craven's night in spectacular fashion. A pit road penalty sent early leader Dale Jarrett back in the field. With his competition depleted, Jeff Gordon cruised to his second win in this 600-mile classic. Who Won was brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. This Bud's for you. Who's going to win is the issue here. Are you ready for this? Take a look at what happened just moments ago. Lap 267. Down the back straightaway, Mark Martin leads. Dale Jarrett runs up on the back of the car. Is Mark Martin strong? Down to the bottom. He goes by Jarrett. Watch how easily he makes this look as he goes by Gordon, pulls back in the lead. What a race car, what a move. From third to first, got them both. Gordon held on in second. Yeah, I'm just here trying to support him. How strong is he? You are very close with Dale Jarrett and the team. You know what they have. Does he have it tonight? I think he does. Uh, they're just fine-tuning it, and uh, every time they come in, it's just small changes, so that tells me they're pretty good. Well, you won't see many more 600s without that man, Kenny Irwin. To Steve Burns. And Michael with Ricky Craven. We mentioned at the top of the show, Randy LaJoy is filling in. Ricky, first things first, how's your health? When can we see you back? I'm doing good. You know, it's been a, it's awfully tough to set out for two and a half months. And uh, I'm missing one of my favorite races here, but Randy's doing a great job with the team. And I'm going to be back in about a month. I feel like I could be back next week. I want to be back next week, but we're going to play it cool, get everything in order, be back for the uh, Daytona race in July. By the way, we should uh, mention happy birthday to you, Ricky. Oh, God, you're right. 32 today. Son of a gun. <laughs> All right, well, hurry back. Let's go back upstairs. 32 indeed today. Action out here. Gordon on the outside. You see Dale Jarrett on the outside. As they come through the dog leg as they head down towards turn one. Jarrett on the outside. Gordon just kind of rolls out the throttle and says, go ahead. I'm beginning to not have him quite as well as I was just a few laps back. And there's still plenty of time, 275 laps complete of the 400 to be run. Let's remember Jeff Gordon back in 93 when he was a rookie, crashed and crashed and crashed and crashed. No, he didn't crash at all. Pits are open and here comes the lead bunch down pit road now. Critical pit stop right now, down to 45 miles an hour as they hit the white line and they are in. Spencer first, 99 first pits. Watching those top three runners as they approach their pits. Let's go down to the action. And Jeff Gordon into the 24. They just made a slight chassis adjustment to the right rear. Jeff Gordon saying the car was good going into the corner, but loose in the middle. Another good stop. Let's go to Alan Bestwick. Rusty Wallace is in all little trouble on the left rear. He got out with the lead last time. He's not going to get out with the top spot this time. So Rusty Wallace, four tires, and he's away. Martin, Labonte, Gordon rolling out. And just in front of them, you see, what, the 88 there? That's where the drama was on pit road, and that's how fast it happened. The track position being so important. Dale Jarrett seems to have that advantage as they roll back onto the track. Ooh, as they 
Gordon Carr looked a little loose there at Baker. Well, that happens with the new tires. They, he had got the uh, temperature up in the tires and the air pressure isn't exactly like you want it. And they don't drive real good until you get the tires the way you want them. It's got to be a handful, buddy. It is that. Especially cars that have a tendency to be on the loose side when you don't have the air pressure up like it should be. It dances around. I heard a guy say it. It handles like a dirty rag. <laughs> Walking the road. We used to call it on the old board tracks, and they were high bank, holding on to each other, skimming along in these grass. What a beautiful shot. That's Jimmy Spencer just in front there, going down into turn one, right on the white line. Right where you want to be. If you want to see what a driver sees, that's exactly what it looks like. ...around and, and wanted to be a part of it, and Richard always had time for them, and so did my dad. And I think the, the two of them have, have shown me exactly what it takes uh, to, to be successful at this, uh, not only on the racetrack, but away from it also. That's where they're so, so strong together. There's Richard Petty looking on, the guy who has influenced so many people over the years, watching his number 43 of Andretti, which is in sixth spot. You saw Jeremy Mayfield make up a lap. He's two down as he tries to wend his way back into this race. Still time to do it, but he's got to stay in front of Mark Martin. He's taken over up in front. Garrett's back to second. Gordon in third. Pontiac with Bobby Labonte in fourth. And Jimmy Spencer in fifth. Today's race started three Pontiacs in the top ten. Bobby Labonte being one of them. Jeff Burton being another. And John Andretti the third. Prior to this, two Pontiac victories over the years in this famous 600. Rusty Wallace in 90 and David Pearson in 61. Look at Gordon go through. Well, they've been running side by side. Gordon finally got back by Bobby Labonte. At one time, Bobby Labonte went by on the outside, couldn't make it stick. Track temperature right now. Let's check it out with Steve Burns. Ken, remember when we started at this at 6 o'clock at night, the track temperature was 94 degrees. This is very difficult for the crew chief to contend with. Let's take a look now. And it's showing about 83 degrees, so it's dropped at least 11 degrees in track temperature since 6 o'clock. What's that do to your strategy, guys? Well, it's not, I'll tell you, it's not that big a track temperature drop in comparison to what we ordinarily see. Very often here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, when the sun is fully out, it can get wickedly hot during the day, and the track heats up dramatically. At night, it takes it a while, but it'll finally cool down a whole lot more than that. So this is not as difficult a problem as the mechanics often face here in Charlotte. By the same token, they've all got books. They all have a good idea what they need to do with their race car to keep that thing running as fast as it could possibly go as the night wears on. The real thing right now, this is, look at Dale Jarrett go by Mark Martin on the outside. Mark is not running quite as well at this point of the race. Here comes Jeff Gordon by on the inside as they head down in turn three. Mark keeps a fire built in that thing, but Gordon has been very, very good at the early part of the run. But just behind them, Bobby Labonte sitting there in fourth place. Very good race for this part of the race. Whatever little adjustments that they made on that car in the last round of pit stops don't seem to particularly suit Mark Martin, but he knows exactly what to tell his team to do. It's interesting, not long ago, he called into his pit crew after a pit stop, and he said, how come you guys changed the right rear tire pressure a half a pound? They hadn't told him that they had done that, and he sensed it driving the race car. Oh, he's wiggling. Mark Martin's in trouble. Jack Rouse looking on. Betty's on the radio right now saying, what happened? Here's Gordon down to the inside and bringing the Pontiac or Bobby Labonte with him. You've got Ford, Chevy, Pontiac. One, two, three, and the Coca-Cola 600. As we wind these laps down. 294 complete. Don't get too excited about Mark Martin dropping back just a little bit. He's a very, very patient race car driver. You're riding with him down in the corner right now, right on the white line. You see these oh. guys that just passed him a second ago. Here he comes back. Wow. Well, he had that little wiggle a little while ago, but he doesn't seem to be bothering him at all right now. Mark Long on the bottom. He's such a good driver. He can make so much correction. He just has such a good natural sense about a race car. Well, he's put his whole life into this thing. This is really what Mark Martin has done to the time when he was a little kid. This is the great goal, and he is now entering the very best years of his racing career. 
you know, we watched him a while ago go low on the racetrack there, trying to get by Bobby Labonte side by side down through the dog leg. It looks like Mark Martin's car is coming to him right now, but he has a different driving style than anybody else on the racetrack. He puts both left hands on the inside of the in uh, steering wheel going into the corner, and, and the reason he did that is starting out down the straightaway. Watch him now. He'll cross his hand over and put it on the right-hand side when he starts in the you see that? What he did, what? The reason he does that, I'll get it out here in a second. He puts his hand over there. When he first started racing, he weighed about 105 pounds. And that was the way he turned the car into the corners. And he never changed his driving style. And let me tell you something. You hear people talking about the proper way to hold the steering wheel. What works for you is the best way. Mark Martin's proof of that is he makes the move while Bobby Labonte's out the back straightaway. Watch him again inside of the pen. Boy, that's something to watch him and have you describe it, buddy. Here comes that Bobby Labonte car after him, and there he is tucking it right in there. Yep, both hands on the far side of the steering wheel. Now, down the straightaway, he'll put his hands nine out of ten times back over there, except when I talk about it. No, he, he does it in the back stretch, I think, more. You see him going in the corner there. Both hands on the left-hand side of the steering wheel as he turns in the corner. As he starts off on the back straightaway, he'll straighten his hands back up. Take a deep breath. Wow, you're riding with him in first place, friend, as we're at the 39th annual Coca-Cola 600. Well, this is quite the struggle. Look at this. I know Dale Jarrett would love to be able to use the whole racetrack right now in pursuit of the first two cars in front of him out there, but right now, <laughs> You can see Mayfield in front of Gordon there. Gordon having to take the low line. Here comes Mark Martin just behind him. Gordon, defending 600 champion, fourth place. Trying to move back under Mayfield, and here comes Mark Martin with him. John Andretti is next in line. He is in sixth, Spencer in seventh, Nima check eighth. Hundred seventy-five miles an hour that last lap on Bobby Labonte. Fresh tires and turning up the whip. Jeff Gordon, on the other hand, he took fuel and right side tires. So two tires for Jeff Gordon, no tires for Mark Martin. Let's go to Allen. There you see Mark Martin up in front, Jeff Gordon in second. Benson is in third. What a race Johnny Benson has had. Michigan fans are going to be standing and shouting some tonight as we get down to the conclusion of this one. Rusty Wallace is fourth, Spencer is fifth, Bobby Labonte is sixth, and Jarrett is in seventh. Darrell Walter, one lap down in that number one. Mark Martin takes the green flag as they go into the first turn. Getting down to it. Thirty-nine. Got a lap down, made it back up again. Here he is challenging. He's still got a shot to win this thing. Jeff, Jeff Gordon there in second place. He did extremely fast for about 10 to 15 laps until the tires get hot. And then he's been dropping off the pace just a little bit as he goes by Mark Martin coming off turn two. Gordon picks it up into first place. Jeff Gordon trying to repeat. Here comes Wallace. And every time with a full fuel load, we're seeing that number two car bounce off the pavement. We saw the sparks as he went through the corner. Million dollar bonus. Mark Martin not giving it up. He's fighting back on the outside. You can see the two cars look like they're welded together. Going down into turn one, sparks flying off the Rusty Wallace's car. It'll do that until the fuel load gets a little bit lighter. He's right on the ground. This car is happening. Second spot to Wallace, the million dollar bonus getting closer. That red spoiler on the back that you can see from Mark Martin's viewpoint. That's like putting a red flag in front of a bull out here. <laughs> Ray Evernham, crew chief for Jeff Gordon on the strategy, how it works and doesn't work in the Coca-Cola 600. Oh. <laughs> well, I think the best, the best strategy that we ever had in the 600 was the night we took the two tires and, and uh, beat Rusty, won our first ever Winston Cup race. Uh, probably the thing that backfired is uh, 1995 when we had that wheel come off and, and I ended up with a huge fine. So those were probably the best and worst moments uh, for us at Charlotte ever. 
was on pit road that night and I stood with Rusty Wallace at the gas pumps as he kept staring at victory lane saying I can't believe he beat me taking only two tires and we have a similar scenario playing out tonight because on that last round of pit stops Mark Martin took none Gordon took two Labani took four Dale Jarrett took four what will the smart strategy be 47 laps to go when they come by Boy, I tell you what, Rusty Wallace looked awful strong in the corners. Ran off the racetrack is sticking so well getting into turn one a while ago. The sparks just flew, as you can see, right on the white line. The left side tires actually went down on the flat part of the racetrack just then getting into turn one. Two cars handling extremely well late in the event. The crews have adjusted them all night long. They started out pretty close. They're real close now as Rusty heads to the high side. Coming off turn four, Rusty Wallace on the outside, Jeff Gordon on the inside, Mark Martin just behind him there. Chevy down low, Ford up high. This is what every seat has been sold to see and what oh, a show they're getting. Did you see the two car, Rusty Wallace, sideways getting into turn one. He took the lead. That's what he's good at. Boy, can he catch him. He pitches him in there and he does his own catching so beautifully. Coming out of two. Makes the move. And here comes Bobby Labonte into the picture for third. I think that's what Rusty Wallace looked in the mirror and saw this 18 car, Bobby Labonte, coming like a freight train behind him. He said, I better put some distance on him. A bit power to Roger Penske said thanks a million when Rusty Wallace caught hold of that car and didn't spin it out. Wallace now holding up the first, Gordon in second. Gordon, the second driver to win the Winston Million back in 97. He took that Southern 500 over Jeff Burton. Pointer for Jimmy Smith having an excellent run down to the way. Oh, look at Labonte coming out of there. I told you, he was coming like a freight train. You can see him wiggling that steering wheel. A little bit loose up off the corner. Mark Martin comes with him. I thought he was going to turn the thing around there. He was right on the edge of the envelope. Well, this has happened all night. Jeff Burton very, very strong for 15 or 20 laps. But after the tires get hot, these cars are in the boogie. These fours are really hooked up right now. But you know the Pontiac of Bobby Labonte doing an amazing strength. Take a look at Wallace. There's the interval between first and fourth. Back to car 24. Eight tenths of a second lead. Rusty Wallace over Labonte. Out of that thing to see. Ah, look at this. Here comes Jarrett. Back around Gordon. This is for fourth. Gordon slipping back. Unable to keep the car running real fast into the corner. Gordon gives up a little bit of track there. You can tell that the car is not sticking to suit him going into the corner. Mm -hmm. Gordon's going to need another pit stop. He's going to be able to do anything with these guys. Rusty Wallace qualified for the Noble uh, Million in the Daytona 500 when he finished fifth. Here he is leading at the moment. But let's go to Steve Burns. And let's review the pit strategy on that last pit stop. Jeff Gordon took two tires in the 24 car. Bobby Labonte took four. And Allen likewise down here in the 18 pits. Joe Gibbs, Jimmy Make. Got a car in the wall. Oh boy. Bradbury has crashed in the 78. This makes a whole different race now. That brings everybody back into contention on the lead lap. Now, we saw those front three all come in for two tires. And the question to Dick Bergen, what about the ones behind that trio? Well, Gordon took four. He really had to. The car wasn't fast enough the way they had it. The 43, John Andretti also took four tires. Same story. Fire four at it. Hope that's going to work. And the Winston uh, open, you could remember Jimmy Spencer taking on four. He was clearly much, much faster than the other cars with four fresh tires. You see Waltrip in the number one. He's a lap down in 10th position. Behind him is Schrader in 11th, Musgrave 12th, Marlin 13th, and Ernie Irvin in 14th. Robert Presley with a great night in 15th. Uh, Field moving ready. down. It's Wallace first, Labonte second, Martin third, Jarrett fourth, great, Benson great, great. right there. Here they come. Go, go, go. Out of turn four and down to the line. Back 
for the strike. Mark Martin digging on the inside. Dale Jarrett on the outside makes his move, and here comes Gordon. Gordon with four fresh tires on the Chevrolet has been lightning quick on, on all of these starts tonight. You see him right now digging for every inch of real estate that he can get. It's the two fours run side by side. They have him bottled up right now. In the box, the 24. Trying to squeeze through. That's as good as we have seen that car run all night. He is right on Jarrett's bumper. Outside, inside move. And that maneuver by number 24 makes Gordon a real prospect again to win this race. race. Third spot, and right now it's the fastest race track car on the racetrack. He came out of the pits in sixth. He is now third. Two to go. He's got two more guys to pass. These two guys, I'm going to tell you right now, going to that, you can see Rusty Wallace in the two-car lead. Bobby Labonte down into turn one, just behind him, Jeff Gordon, closing ever so fast. Yeah, they've got a million reasons to keep Jeff Gordon back there. First and second are all our contenders to take that million-dollar bonus. The noble million-dollar bonus. Top five from Daytona. Bonus does not count right now to Jeff Gordon. All he wants is to win the 600. He's within one car left now. Bobby Labonte in second. Labonte has also closed on Rusty Wallace, the leader. Here we go. Gordon outside. Gordon on the outside. Of, as they come off turn two, it looks like Gordon with the four fresh tires really has the momentum. Chevrolet goes into second. Pontiac dropped to third. Ford still leading. Rusty Wallace, that number two Ford. Well, he won his first race ever here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Gordon did with tires strategy. Tonight, looks like he's played his cards right. Rusty Wallace needs to use up a lot of racetrack right now. And you see Jeff Gordon less than the car left back in second place. I'm not sure he can hold him off. Gordon's looking around right now, trying to get racing room. I guarantee you that right now, Rusty Wallace has one eye in the mirror, one on where he's going. I don't need incentive to race hard every lap, says Rusty Wallace, but a million dollars could make a little difference. He's given it everything he's got. And here is the 24 car closing in again, the car that pressed into the wall in the second turn right there yesterday, coming to the outside. Here comes Gordon making the move, and again, wide overling. It's number two Wallace to hold the spot. Doing exactly what I said. It's his race right now. You see Bobby Labonte making a move on the outside of Gordon there. Oh, wow. They're Free making a sandwich. Jeff Gordon trying to win it back to back to win his third 600. It's not done yet. Just in fourth place there. Dale Jarrett making a move now, trying to move up. Like a bandit in the night. Pickpocketing. Wallace and Labonte. And pulling away now is Jeff Gordon. Here comes Wallace back. What a move by Jeff Gordon to take the lead. Now, when he use up all the good of those tires, as hard as he's been running. The Chevrolet has been lightning fast for about 15 laps. Then it starts giving up. Bobby Labonte, you're riding with him now as we come off turn two. High on the racetrack. Top five all together as this thing winds down. 395 to 400 complete. Jim Gordon has said he wasn't racing, he'd probably go to college to further his education. Could buy his own college after the night. And the town is in. <laughs> well, what about it? Can Wallace muster one more challenge to take this back and take the million dollar bonus? Ray Evernham looking on, pacing as Jeff Gordon gets ever closer to becoming a three time winner of the 600. Well, Five times what. he's been on the pole. Yep. The tires haven't started going away yet. You can see Gordon clearly in the lead right now, and the car does not show any ill effects in the corner. Nice and smooth, running his own line. No problems whatsoever with the handling on that race car. Opening distance between himself and Rusty Wallace. And indeed he did about five, six car lengths. 
going for his third win of 1998. He wanted Bristol. He wanted Rockingham. Is Gordon going to stay with it and do it tonight? Here he is. Carson out of turn number two. We know for a fact he has enough fuel to make it this time, so it's not going to be like the Western. He's not going to run out of fuel. But I tell you, Rusty Wallace is driving his heart out right now, trying to close in on Jeff Gordon. Gordon's just the clash of the field right now. In command, solidly in command as this race winds down. Wallace can almost sense that extra million dollars just floating away from his fingers as Gordon continues to build on the lead. Everham continuing to look on. The ex-modified driver from New Jersey who, with his magic, has put this guy into such a great position. There you saw Pemberton looking on. Crew chief, car number two. As we get down to the end, the white flag is out. This is it to decide it all. Final lap into turn number one. Jeff Gordon, unrelenting has continued to draw away, but now Wallace has closed in a little. Mark Martin moves to the inside of the 18 of Bobby Labonte. All for not, as far as the victory is concerned. Down they come out of turn number four, and for the third time in his career, it is Jeff Gordon winning the 600 in Charlotte, North Carolina. The Coca-Cola 600 will have Gordon's name on the trophy. Jeff Gordon has done it, and it is a surprise. It was not that big a deal all night long, but when it counted, it was the biggest deal here. It was the whole deal, making that pit stop, taking on four tires. He had to have it. He had dropped all the way back to fifth before that pit stop. And driver after driver driving by, waving at him, congratulating Jeff Gordon on his victory. Let's go to Mike Hogwood. And we're here with Ray Abraham. What a 10 days of speed here in Charlotte. Running out of gas in Winston. You wrecked yesterday, and then you finish it up back-to-back -back 600 titles. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's really great. This is an awesome, awesome team, and Jeff is an awesome driver. We need to thank God first uh, for giving us the opportunity to do this. And I want to thank uh, DuPont, Pepsi, Quaker State, all the people that help us out and stand behind us when we have problems like we did the other night. And, and the fans, hey, this one's for you for the mistake I made the other night. What about that great move getting past Rusty Wallace? He's the man. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but, you know, he's a... Uh, no slam to anybody else, but that kid's about the greatest driver I've ever seen. And, and Rick, uh, we got to make a new deal for something else on this. Uh, hope you and Linda got to watch it. When that last caution came out and you got the four fresh tires, did you feel that that was what you needed to compete here at the end? Well, we weren't going to win it where we were. And uh, like I told him, look, you know, let's let's not look. We're going to be fifth. Let's, let's try and win this thing. Let's try and win this thing. OK, right. Ray Evernham back upstairs. And it's a happy team down here. And win it they did. And in what style? Flat out racing here at Charlotte over a spectacular last 20 miles. Waiting on Jeff Gordon to enter victory lane. And we'll have the winner's interview right after this. Out of the car and in victory lane. Let's get down there right now and meet the champion. Well, Jeff, we've seen some impressive victories by Jeff Gordon and the Rainbow Warriors, but that was one of the tops. Uh, that was a Rainbow Warrior win right there, man. That was awesome. Uh, tell you what, all, all it took was four tires. As other guys came in, took two. I mean, they, they couldn't take the, the gamble, you know, to take two. And we didn't have anything to lose, so we took four. Great call. Uh, I felt like if we had four tires to there, too, we might be able to beat them then. But uh, I want to thank DuPont Automotive Finishes. Uh, the Chevrolet was awesome today. Goodyear tires did a heck of a job. But uh, this one's for Pepsi, man. Uh, they, this means a lot to them to come to Victory Lane. And, uh, and we've been able to do it two years in a row. And the good Lord was working, looking out for us. And I'm so thankful. Now, Jeff, I'll ask you first. And Brooke, then I'll ask you, tell the truth. Did you think you're going to win the race there on the last restart? Are you kidding me? <laughs> no way, man. No way. Uh, I had no idea we were going to win this race. I, I was just hoping we could get a couple guys and get us a top five and, and you know, be in that noble uh, challenge uh, in Indianapolis. And all of a sudden, man, I picked off two right away. Well, Johnny Benson slid his tires on the restart. I got by him, and then I got by the next two. And I said, man, I might have a chance here. It reminded me of the Winston. I tell you what, 
These guys redeemed themselves today. Ray did. I know he's happy about this. They did a heck of a job. Hey, Rick, <laughs> I know he's excited watching at home, man. This is a great victory for Hendrick Motorsports. Jeff, we're going to show the viewers at home that last pass. Talk us through what you're thinking as you made the move. That was pretty wild. You know, uh, I, I tried to go to the outside of Rusty. He got loose. We both went high. I, I knew Bobby Labonte was coming. I was like, oh, man, he's going to get both of us. And uh, as we, you know, I blocked him. He kind of bumped me going down the back straightaway. And uh, he actually got to the outside of me, in which that helped me because I was tight. And it actually loosened my carbs. so I could turn and go underneath Rusty. And I just stood in the gas and said, there's either going to be a wreck or we're going to win this thing. All right, Brooke, tell the truth. Did you think he could do it? Well, I never, never Boy, doubt him. Never I doubt never that. doubt him. But I tell you, he, he pulled it out there at the end. He even surprised me and the whole team. I'm so proud of him. All right, congratulations to you both. Let's go to Randy. Well, Rusty 